Now, nothing aggravates a child more than the thought that their brother or sister is getting something more, something bigger or something better. And they all think it too. On Anne Mumpedia Pro 3 Coffee Group, we are talking sibling rivalry with mum of eight, that's eight, Dina Sinisa and psychologist Sarah Chatwin. Good morning to you both. I only have four. Good morning. <laughs> I'm ready to pin a medal on this woman. I have four and that is enough. She has eight. I oh was doing all right with three. Um, <laughs> Dina, obviously a lot of love in your house, but occasionally yes. there must be that bit of tension amongst the kids. What, yes. are, the, what are the main causes? Well, teasing is yeah. number one. Oh, yeah. So, of course, somebody will start it and then, and then somebody reacts and then it's going to snowball and... Yes, yeah, yes. The teasing, kind of sometimes I find myself tearing my hair out with the teasing that goes on with my three children. And, and they just keep on going. And they say, it's, Mum, it's just banter. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> right. Can you banter out of Mum's hair? Because it's really annoying. <laughs> it's a good excuse. Um, Sarah, does it have to be fair? I mean, or is it re reasonable that older kids should get more? Or how does it work? I think it's reasonable that parents really try to be even-handed and fair with their children when they're dealing with them. But I think that, that it's good to communicate with your kids and let them know why one child is getting something or why yeah. another child is being punished. Because when children have an understanding of the rationale behind it, there's less niggliness and less banter or teasing. Yeah, that's true. Although yeah. sometimes I think you've got to actually have a spreadsheet going yeah, and I put everything in it so you can say, excuse me, you may have got this, but last week your brother got this, so yeah. everything's fair, guys. It, it does pay to remember. It does yeah. pay to have a bit of a, a list and, and just know what has gone on in the past so that you can reason with them. Yeah, because they've got memories right. like elephants when <laughs> exactly. it comes to what they're getting. Um, Dina, exactly. so how do you actively avoid the causing the sibling rivalry in your household? Well, one is that we've got rules that apply to everyone. So let's say no sleepovers, everyone. So there are blanket rules. Right. And then the other thing is we explain, like what Sarah said, we explain why one gets something and the, somebody else doesn't get it. And usually it's because of need. So say this child needs an iPad for school yep. because it's a need, but you don't need it. So that's why they have it. Yes. And for the same for the mobile phones and things like that. And it's very clear to them. Although sometimes the younger one can come up with a definite need yeah. as to why they do it. Something that their older brothers have got, I found in our household, and yeah. write two notes about why they need it. Um, <laughs> so, are parents inadvertently making matters worse a lot of the time without realising it? Nobody writes the manual for parenting, do they? And it, it, it amazes true. me as a psychologist exactly. how many of us get it right because mm -hmm. there are so many things you can get wrong. So I think inadvertently parents do make mistakes and we're going to. And children do have needs that are potentially not so needy, um, but they are still going to ask. I liked that Dina said, you know, again, she communicates with her children and she allows them to see what goes on behind the reason. Reasons. I also think it's neat if you find a way to connect with each child. Now, in your case, mm. you'd be finding a lot of ways because you've got eight. Um, and parents do tend to have to parent each child quite differently sometimes. Mm. But I think if, if a child is getting something, then think about how you can connect on some level with mm. your other children. Then they don't feel left out because I think a lot of times all kids want is to feel special. So mm. find something special for each child and just bring it up at times when you need to do mm. that. Yeah. Dina, how do you keep that calm though when one child has something that has to have something and the other just really wants it? Oh, that's difficult because like you said, um, yeah. we try to explain, but not everyone gets it because they say, but no, I need it. Or selective hearing too. Yes, that's great that. right. <laughs> but I guess also what helps us with a big family like that, it's really impossible to have one of each, um, like everyone having something, right? And they know that, they're aware of that, that mm -hmm. there's also the, the cost involved. And, and so early on, they learn to live with that. And then just realizing and making sure that, that it's logical, mm. that they tr they'll understand it. They won't always understand it, but then we just have to put your foot yeah. down. And the fact that there's enough for everybody's needs, but not enough for everybody's wants. Yeah, that's I very think true. That's the thing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It is a great a chat. Sibling rivalry. A lot of that happens in our household. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Coffee Group is brought to you by And Mum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, if you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, you can message us on the Cafe Facebook page. Now, one contributor.
contributor. Well, when this very cool ebook, which comes from Anne Mum, have a listen to this. Hey Mel, I've got a bedtime story for you. I'm over here. You can record your own voice. Yeah. So cool. Congratulations to this week's winner, Samantha Joe Durham. Your ebook is on its way.